Hey there Akuma fans, Charlie with the Gossiker Application Staff. Today's video we're going to talk about TCPC or Tool Center Point Control. Most of us that have been programming 5-axis in the past we know uh, TCPC is something that my CAD CAM software uses when I'm doing some, some uh, 3D contouring, some 5-axis full motion. Uh, I'm not really sure how it works but eh, I know that the, the software throws that in and it, it seems to do what we expect it to do. So let's break it down into its its most fundamental uses and maybe we can find a way that this is going to help you in programming 3 plus 2 or 3 plus 1 uh, instead of just using TCPC for full 5 axis. As you can see over here on my uh, my screen, I'm using an MU machine today. That's a full five axis, C axis rotary table, and an A axis on a trunnion that swings back and forth. But this is also good for anything, any machine that has tool center point control as an option and uses a rotary axis. So horizontal, no problem. Three axis vertical with a fourth axis. As long as you've got the option for tool center point control, this one is for you. Let's take a look at my program here real quick, just so we can see what it is I'm trying to do. It's pretty rudimentary. I've got a, a home call. I'm turning off my collision avoidance because a tool center point control doesn't like cast turned on. I'm going to move to the XYCA0, which is the top of a five inch square block. It's the lower left hand corner of the block. And um, I'm just, right now I've got my command for TCPC, G169. I've got that operator noted out because I want to show you what the program does first and then we'll engage tool center point control and it'll blow your mind. I'm moving to an eighth inch from the top of the part and then I'm just going to trace out an X five inches, that's a five inch square block as I said, and then we're going to go up in Y. So for that dog leg move, you're going to see the tool just trace the outside of the block. Then I'm going to rotate my C axis, move again in X and Y, move the C. Then at the very bottom, I will move the A axis back and forth. And currently with tool center point control deactivated, we're going to see some eh, pretty weird stuff here. So I'm going to put myself in single block mode and let's just march our way through this. Okay, we have a tool change and now I am over the X, Y, A and C zero. Move to one eighth of an inch off the part, just like so. And as I described, my first move, a five inch move over the X axis. Yep, that's pretty normal and a Y positive move going up to the upper corner. All right, great. Now the next move is gonna to be to rotate the C axis 90 degrees. And since my origin is here and it's at the center of my, uh, my C axis, you notice the part just swiveled itself out from underneath the, the, the tool. And now when I go to X zero, it's gonna come back to this line, although it's still nowhere near the part. And a Y zero we're getting back to the center. And now a couple of C axis moves. We'll just see the, um, see the part rotate underneath the tool. But you notice that, well, X, Y, and Z, as well as A, are not moving at all. Now I've moved to an X of 2.5, which is completely off of the part. And let's just blast through that last C axis motion. And it's going to put the tool about halfway down on this line. We're back to C0, my main orientation, and we're at X two and a half. And now let's just swivel the A axis. Notice that, all right, the tool is no longer on the edge of the part, of course, because as the A swiveled, the, uh, the part moved away from the edge of the, of the tool. And now we'll be out of way in the other direction. Okay, no problem pretty cut and dry right now let's get back into take off my single block here let the program terminate and now let's take out the G56 the regular height offset move and enable the tool center point control G169 remember to select and quit always remember okay single block back on and let's march our way through this program Okay, same as we saw before, tool positions itself over the part, 
at an eighth of an inch. These first two moves, the X positive move and the Y positive move, it's exactly the same as it was before I enabled tool center point control. However, now I'm parked over that back corner of the part as I'm about to engage C of 90. Watch what happens. Notice that my X and Y are moving as well as C because tool center point control is maintaining the tool's posture over the point that I told it to be in before moving the rotary axis. Now the next move is another interesting one, X0. Wouldn't you all expect to see this tool traverse this line of the part to go back to X0? But because tool center point control is engaged and it knows that the C axis has moved, notice it's moving the Y axis even though I told it X. And now we told it to go to Y0, it's going to do exactly what you'd expect, but it's going in the X minus direction. So the part has rotated, but the machine is still thinking in its primary coordinate conversion. And we'll do our little C axis motion. There's one. Now we're going to move to that X 2.5, but you notice it moved in the minus direction because the part is 180 degrees out. See that C 180 from where it was when I established my origin. And now when I do my C 270, the X and Y are going to move to maintain the tool's posture at the X 2.5 Y zero. Now we'll go to C zero, still following it around. Now here's where it gets really cool. Watch what happens when I do the A axis. X is going to hold position, but both Y and Z are moving along with the A axis to maintain that 125 thousandths posture over the Z axis. So there we go. Now we're moving back in the other direction. Boom. And then back to zero. And we'll take off single block and let it terminate. Just enough to finish talking. So what does this mean for you? Let's go ahead and run it while I'm talking. What this really allows you to do is to utilize tool center point control as a makeshift version of dynamic fixture tracking. Let's say for instance, I only have one work offset, but I need to make some holes on the side of my part by rotating a B axis, a C axis, an A axis, whatever it is I need to do to change my work plane from operating on the top to operating on the side. Well, one way of doing that is having, say, G15H1 represent the top of the part and then G15H2 represent the side. But now you're not guaranteed a relativity between the two offsets. You have adjustability, that's cool. But doggone it, I want to be able to just say, hey, this is my one work offset and I want all these features all the way around the part to be engaged and relative to that one primary offset. So that's what tool center point can do. Every time I call up a tool, I will um, move it to a position relative to the datum in the orientation with the rotary in the orientation that I expect, and then engage tool center point control and rotate the C axis or the B axis, depending on which one I'm, I'm operating with. And uh, now the features that I am calling out are still relative to that primary work offset. Blow your mind. If you're doing some manual programming, this is a great little shortcut. It's one that I use quite a lot and um, it really makes life interesting if you don't have a cam system to help you out. So I hope this answers some questions about tool center point control. If you have any questions, feel free to holler. Wow, I like the little blue box. What the heck happened there? <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your local Gossiger application staff. We're always here to help. Leave me a comment, uh, like and subscribe, all that other horse hockey, and um, we hope to see you out there.